started? Um, I majored in journalism in college, um, and I went to college in D.C., and I my first job out of school was um, working at a nonprofit, as everyone does in D.C., um, and it was a, I was a communications, like, person there, um, and I was just like, this is crazy, this is not what I'm going to do, and I was doing a bunch of, like, freelance journalism um, for music. So I was writing for, like, CMJ when that was a magazine and Rock rock Pile and Amplifier and, mm-hmm. and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and so I was like, this is not what I want to do at all. I don't want to be writing about United Way scandals and all this nonsense. Um, and so I moved to New York, and I interned at CMJ when CMJ was a magazine. And um, I got eventually got hired to be editorial assistant for um, CMJ New Music Weekly when there was a weekly and a monthly magazine. And the day I started my job, um, they decided to fold the magazines into one. So the monthly what got absorbed into, or the weekly got absorbed into the monthly. So essentially the day I started my job, my job was cut because the magazine no longer existed. And so I was 23 living in New York and I was like, what do I do now? Um, and so they gave me like some like enter radio charts job. They were like, we have to give you something. Um, so I was entering radio charts. And then I also did a, um, internship at AAM and I did, um, they did college radio and they did not have a PR team and they were losing out, um, jobs to places that like the Natic at the time was huge where they offered press and radio and I was still doing music journalism and so they were like you know a lot of editors do you want to do this and I was like I don't know what this means but are you giving me a job and they were like sure um and um yeah so that's essentially how I got my job was they were just like start the department and I was like uh 23 or 24 and there was no database there was nothing there was no structure there was nothing in place um so I just remember going to like the Barnes and Noble by NYU and just like sitting there for hours just like you know like everyone you had camera phones but not really so I'd like take pictures of like the mastheads or something like that um and just like write down all the contacts like I had notebooks and was like writing down like this person is that you know this magazine and like picking editors brains I was like who do I pitch and then someone that we know that will remain anonymous um uh because that's still on everyone's pitch list so it's basically like copying and you know everyone's pitches someone that Tino and I both know very well um did not send out a like m- massive pitch and didn't BCC anybody's emails. And so I was like, oh, hey, person, do you want to be added to my database? And I probably got like 200 contacts just from that because they just, I just added all these people and was like, well, I just found your email address. Would you like to be added to my mailing list? And, you know, um, and then I started booking like late night TV and things like that. And I got to a point where I was like, you know, the only publicist and I um, wanted to kind of figure out what the next step was. And I got a job at Motormouth in L.A. and um, I moved to L.A. And then I started working there and then just kind of. Nice. Nice. All right. I guess I'll go then. Um, Yeah, I was a very aimless college kid. My thing in college was I used to deliver room service at hotels. And so that was my job. And so I was uh, friends with somebody who had mentioned that at the University of Texas, where I went to school, uh, the daily newspaper, they had a they had a sort of call for, for people to for writers. They wanted entertainment writers. And so I had never thought of being like a writer. Mm-hmm. And she had suggested I applied. So I just I wrote a terrible review uh, and submitted it. And I got hired and I'm meeting one of my really good friends still to this day, who was the music editor. And I just got, I just kind of went from there. I didn't really have any sort of thought that I would be any kind of writer until that sort of developed. So when I was just a music writer, then when he graduated, I became the music editor. And then when that, I just kind of kept going. So by the time of my senior year, I was the entertainment editor of the entire newspaper, uh, which at the time was the largest college newspaper in the country. So it was cool. Um, you know, I was responsible for fine arts coverage, you know, movies, music, of course, and just kind of the everyday uh, publishing of, uh, of the paper. So I was, that just became my job. So I quit all my service industry jobs and kind of went off in that. I figured like, you know, thinking that I'd be a music writer, I came to New York, just, I, you know, finished school, started, you know, rooms, doing more room service. It's such good money. Like it's just such the easiest and best job. I moved home, worked for a year and saved up money, moved to New York, just doing that. And I did that when I first moved to New York as well. But I came thinking I was, I got to New York thinking I was going to be a music writer, that it wouldn't be hard for me to, 
you know, jump on. I had really awesome clips and I had really, I had a lot of stuff and I couldn't even get an internship at, at these places back then when, you know, it was like 2006 and I would march up into spin magazine, like an idiot, like, oh, let's, let's see if spins hiring guys. Why wouldn't they hire me? I had such a, I have such a good resume. I couldn't even get an internship at these places. And so that dream sort of died rather quickly, but getting into press, I remember that, you know, a lot of people that had reached out to us at the newspaper, especially Big Hassle, which is the company that I met Caroline at, um, it's our previous company. All those guys were always really cool. They always called the, the, the office where I worked at in college, pitching their bands that were on the road, doing tour press. And I would always do little profiles and show previews and interviews and all kinds of things like that, that when you're pitching, when you start out doing press, you're doing tour press. Um, really it's just not the most glamorous stuff, but it's nice to make relationships with those people. And I was one of those people that they talked to all the time. And I remembered those guys and they were always really cool to me. And I just thought I would see what it was about. I honestly didn't know what press entailed or being a publicist entailed. So I just, I reached out to Ken over there and they were just like, yeah, he's great. Just hire him. They hired me as an internship. Uh, Chris, who is also my partner at this company, who's already, it's just the three of us. Uh, Chris also was a big hassle. He hired me as an intern and him and I split off and started uh, Clarion Call here. And then Caroline joined us a couple, like, like a year later or something like that. Um, so that's how we kind of all got to know each other. And then from there, I started doing kind of digital marketing stuff. But this is also during like the heyday of digital marketing when it was, you know, widgets and all kinds of fun promotions. And there were like so many websites to do cool things with now that just doesn't exist anymore or there's very little of it. Uh, that was fun because you could do a lot more things and you could go to AOL and spend all day and do a session, you know, a four song session and get catering. Like it's just not a thing anymore, but that's how I started. Then from there, you just kind of gradually move up and, and we were really lucky. I feel I'll always like state this, that Big Hustle was a good company for, I think, you know, for the majority of people who work there to say, Hey, like there were no limitations as to what you could do. Um, if I wanted to be booking TV and I was, you know, hungry enough to get that, then it was always something that was encouraged. It wasn't like, know your place, you're just an assistant, just do my work for me. It was never that. So I think a lot of us like got to a position where, you know, I'm sure Caroline can speak to this too, but Caroline has been doing this longer than I have. Um, just feeling like you got to book TV and you got to book really big features and all kinds of rad stuff, probably before you thought that you were eligible for that or you were, you know, able to be given that opportunity and I was never put in that position. So for that, I'm thankful. And yeah, I started Clarion Con, I guess it was 2015 and we brought all our clients over with us. It was totally fine. And we did that. And also Chris, our, co you know, our coworker, he does governor's ball. So that's another press. That's another thing he brought with us. So we're currently doing that. Um, and other things, you know, along with that, the Meadows, which is a rad festival that, you know, that founders put on and, and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, we mainly kind of just deal with uh, artists and how we're doing with uh, the label here. Uh, and just general press and whatnot, but if we dip, you know, dip into brands and and other things, that's something we're always looking to consider. But that's kind of my background. I mean, I just bust tables and delivered room service, and then slipped into this. There was no yeah. real plan. I think that you know we were both, all of us were really lucky in terms of moving from you know the hospital clearing call. Like you know, it's it's such an interesting thing where it's like when you move companies, sometimes there you know it can be bad blood, or you know it just can not even that it just can kind of rub people the wrong way it's like you're leaving or starting your new company and I, I feel like for the most part it was pretty smooth transition you know I mean there were some bumps in the road but I feel like you know a, a big hospital supports us in terms of what we do you know I think that um you know whenever I see Ken and Jim they're always very kind and very cordial and you know they have a bunch of people in New York obviously and they help us with governor's ball um you know Chris is in Nashville, so he'll hook he'll up in all the fauna roofs, they do the press for that. Like, it's the pretty, I think for a transition, I think it, we were pretty lucky in terms of the, the transition over that, you know, it wasn't like a, what are you guys doing, you know, because, you know, Chris and Tito really did move all of, you know, essentially all of their clients over, you know, obviously there's little bumps in the road and little hiccups, but I think overall it's a, little, a pretty positive relationship years later and even, you know, right after that. And I, I feel pretty, pretty lucky about that. You know, that's definitely something that I feel like it's not, I haven't always experienced that. And I think that it, it's been really nice.
Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, every campaign we work is different, and everybody is at a different level. There's just, you know, and the music's all different as well. I mean, we often get a lot of artists who see what we do for our other artists and not necessarily complain, but they notice that, hey, how come we're not getting Rolling Stone, or how come we're not getting this? And it's it's definitely been something that we hear a lot, but it's just also kind of putting in perspective saying, hey, you know what, I, I approach campaigns a lot in the same way where we do talk to a lot of the same people, but it's also just kind of noticing what that client needs from the outset, say just building a profile, bumping up their social numbers, like them being just a band for a little while would be before approaching someone like Caroline and I, you know, where it's like, hey, we made a record, get us all the biggest press you can. Um, you know, there's got to be a lot of things there. Everything has to really work in unison. There has to be a story. You know, there has to be a place for artists that are smaller and also are bigger artists. Like, there is a certain standard, too, to sort of maintain that from previous albums or campaigns. And if we didn't get, you know, what we got last time, it's almost seen as a failure as well. But for me, I mean, and the way we do it, I mean, I think it's just being uh, an approachable person. Uh, you can't be a jerk in this in this industry in terms of what we do, because a lot of this is based on relationships. And so, yeah, an artist that's big and an artist that does well in the press world is going to get good press, but also you want to work with these people always. And people know Caroline's personality. They know her taste. They know my taste. Um, oftentimes we don't get certain responses from certain people, but that's just the way it is. Uh, others write us back right away because they like us and they know that we're easy to work with. So, you know, working on that is never going to stop. That's something that when you start as a publicist, like becoming someone that you know, is likable and that, you know, wants to make good contacts and wants to make friendly relationships with outlets. And it doesn't even matter. Um, I've had, when I was at my first press job, I was doing tour press for like Def Leppard. And it was just something that I was like, okay, this is what you do when you first start doing press. Um, years later, I was at an event and I knew, oh, it was this person who worked at Rolling Stone. And they came up to me and said that we had never actually met before, but said that they were, that I gave them their first opportunity in covering something when they were in like a senior in high school or something. And now they're an editor, they, now they were an editor at, at the time, they were someone who was working at Rolling Stone. So it's just kind of a thing where you never know where a lot of these people are going to end up. Um, and just being that person that you are. A lot of people do get burned out and frustrated with how it is because, you know, you don't get your emails answered, you don't get people covering you know, covering your bands the way you want them to. Uh, it's, it can be rough, but with those kind of components, I guess, uh, you know, we do definitely approach it in the same way in terms of the same people that we, we respond to, you know, we, we reach out to, but also every project is different in that, you know, there might be other interests there where you can reach out to, you know, people beyond music. Cause I like to not think of myself as simply a music publicist. I've had artists who wanted me to pitch running features and all kinds of stuff, food stuff, you know, whatever. And it's been fun to be able to, have those relationships with others where they can write about music, which isn't typically in their wheelhouse, but I can also pitch somebody new uh, and go from there and have it not be the same handful of people that we write for every album campaign anyway. So I'm not sure if I answered that entirely, but I babble a lot. So probably, but yeah, if you have anything to add to that, Caroline. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say, you know, for me, I always ask them like, you know, what do you do outside of music? And sometimes people are like, I don't really do anything. I play guitar and hang out with my cat. And sometimes people are like, I was a pro surfer and you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to get you, you know, or I'm going to attempt to get you a feature in, you know, a surfing magazine or something, you know, it's like, or I love comics. Let's try and do the Marvel podcast, you know? So it's like, what else makes the, if, if there is something like what else is interesting, like what makes this person kick outside of, you know, just being in a band because at the end of the day, they're, you know, music press is somewhat limited. So how do we expand your reach, you know? So I think that's always really important. Um, you know, I think that, like you said, you know, we always, you know, aim for the stars with everyone. You know, we always are like, okay, even if we, you know, it's like, you know, it's as long as it's like appropriate, it's like, we'll send it to, you You know, we'll send your music to Rolling Stone or Spin or whoever, um, you know, but it's also about managing expectations at the same time where it's like, hey, we got this person at, you know, Spin, Rolling Stone or American Songwriter to listen you know, it just wasn't for them or they didn't have the space or whatever it is, you know, but we are passing it along, you know, and then it's like, okay, like what's the B tier? What's the C tier? You know, and hopefully you don't need to go any further than that, but you know, um, so it's just kind of like also, especially in the early stages, kind of helping artists kind of know where they fit in, where it's like, Hey, you know, this person liked your music, but you guys don't have the social numbers. You don't have the engagement. Like people still care about clicks. People still care about, you know, the shares on that side. So it's like, 
okay, let's work on your socials. At least we know this person likes this song. You know, maybe we can reapproach them with the next one. Um, but, you know, let's do what, what we can with where you are right now. And I think, you know, that especially for the last, you know, three to five years has kind of really been a big thing where it's like, you know, like she was kind of saying before when like the whole like digital marketing, you know, strategy, like online, like that, that really, you know, the peak of that, it was like, you know, you could get any band on spin, you know, not any band, but you know, those opportunities were much more available to developing artists than they are now. Um, you know, just looking at press reports from a couple of years ago and you're just like, this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, doing the best of what you can and also kind of telling people like why this didn't work, you know, and telling people things that they can work on to help it happen in the future. And for me personally, and I'm sure she does the same way, it's like, I've, I've told bands, you know, it's not worth them paying me, you know, I'm like, you know, like do touring, like build up a local following, get your socials in order and come back to us because it's like, you need to present something to press. Like you can't just be like, we have a record, you know, it's, it doesn't work that way. You know, like we're not magicians, you know, we do the best we can, but if there's nothing there, it's like, you know, it's it makes our job impossible, you know, or just very difficult. And, you know, when you're just starting out, it's not always the best use of money, like spend money on ads or spend money on, you know, digital marketing or something, you know, um, so, you know, and it, you know, people generally respect you for saying that, where it's like, you know, you're paying out of pocket, like, don't waste your money, you know, like, um, so yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's such a good point. It's like, uh, as much as you want to present, uh, what, what you can do for, uh, for a band, it's also important to say what you, what's, what they probably should hear as well. I mean, we're in a good position since we're such an indie company to say, Hey, it's really not the right time for you to sort of seek out somebody like this. Why don't you try X, Y, and Z and work on this more, play more shows, like develop a relationship with local journalists there. Like I always encourage all my bands that are small bands to write the music editor at their weekly, you know, and the daily there, just send them music and not make it, not be obnoxious about it and just trying to have those relationships. And I think are always important. I mean, every band that I have, that's like, Oh, we're from here. It's like, you should be getting those features locally as well. It's, it's just as important as you thinking like getting billboard or whatever, whatever it is that you want to have. Um, those are great too. I think that that matters just as much, but yeah, that was, I'm glad she brought that. Caroline brought that up. Cause I mean, we, we tell people all the time, like, it's probably not the right time for you, you know, but yeah, let's talk. I like, I like this. This sounds good to me. I feel we can do something, but it's a little early. Well, I'm actually really, really glad that both of you sort of touched on that because that was my next question, which is when do you think an artist should like hire a publicist and, and think about like these aspects of PR, like these further aspects? Yeah, I mean, I can go into this one. I, it's, I've had artists reach out to me that had nothing, you know, very like me telling them to to create a Twitter page early where I'm like, well, why don't you have this already? Like, it's just, I shouldn't have to be that person. Um, I've had artists at that level who have approached me and I've gotten them insanely good press. And I've had others who have been in the same spot, same position and nothing happened. And where we maybe, I would say, listen, I'm doing what I can here. I'm pitching, I'm pitching everything we're supposed to be pitching and I'm reaching out to the people that make the most sense. But maybe we just kind of cut this off since it's kind of a lot of the times we're working with people that are paying out of pocket. There are no labels involved. People just reach out to us and we're in a position to do that. And I, I've done that. I mean, if I like something, I want to work it and I get along with them, then totally, I'm going to, I'm going to seek that out, but I'm not in the business of like taking someone's money. If it, if it doesn't make sense, um, I will say, Hey, this isn't, this is not it's maybe a little early. I, we definitely tried, but Maybe we can circle back at another time, work on this, this, and that, work on your socials, work on, gosh, play shows. I mean, this is also thinking prior to 2020, but when that returns, uh, bands should be doing those things. They should be doing the the session with the blog that has 300 followers. Like they should be doing little things like that. And it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, oftentimes bands want to start at the top and it's like, listen, I don't really have much to pitch as, as outside of just a really good record. Um, there's gotta be a lot more stuff there and it just makes our job harder. And I think going back to the question, it's, you know, to, oh, we, we always talk about what your goals are and what, what you want to do with this record. Um, and if you feel like the expectations are a lot of whack, we'll address that. But I also feel the need that uh, the need to be honest with everybody. I'll just say, listen, you're not going to get this and you're not going to, you're not going to get that. And it's not defeatist on my end. 
but I also feel that it needs to be said. It's like, hey, I need a little bit more of this to convince this person because I know how they are. I know what they look at and I know that given, yeah, you have a great record and all that kind of great stuff that it does matter, but you know, it's not going to happen for this specific thing. So let's move on. It's a lot of those conversations. And so, yeah, we, we both address bands the same way where it's like, Hey, this is cool. It's, it's a good record, but they're lacking in a lot of this other stuff or, you know, they're just kind of aimlessly going about it. Maybe don't have a label or, or a manager or whatever, but it's like, we always end up kind of taking that on too, where we're the only contact they have in terms of, you know, quickly, hey, what's going on with press, but also, hey, can you get our music to these labels? We also have all those contacts, booking agents. We have so many booking agent contacts, we have so many agent contacts. Um, we end up dipping into a lot of that. It's not necessarily something that Caroline and I enjoy doing because it's you know, it is time consuming, but we're happy to help when we can. It's just, I feel that our situation is different. Uh, a lot of bigger companies definitely don't do that. But since we're so small and so indie that, hey, if someone reached out to us that we were working with that wanted us to get their music out to some agents, like I'm happy to do that. So that's kind of the, the end of it all. But yeah, if you have anything to add, Caroline. I mean, I think it just goes back to basically, you know, what you said, like managing expectations and, you know, like you're not, you know, knowing your place, I think it's like, yeah, you want to obviously do tiny desk, but if you don't have any live sessions, you know, let's start with like the in town, whatever is in your town, like let's get you, let's get some live footage to send to people, you know, so it's like, okay, cool, like if you're, you know, wherever you are, let's do like national noise and let's, you know, so it's like, you know, starting and getting that foundation in place and we can send that to other sites. So when you are on tour, like you can do an audio tree, you can do, you know, paste or whatever, you know, it's like kind of just, uh, keeping people's expectations in check and also, you know, letting them know, like, we're doing everything we can and, you know, sometimes things don't stick and it's, you know, it's like, okay, why didn't we get an NPR's New Music Friday? And it's like, okay, here's these, you know, there's a Rihanna record, there's a Taylor Swift record that, you know, it's like, okay, here's like the top seven pop artists that put a record out the same day as you, you know, it's like not for lack of pitching. And I think it, it is a little bit hard to like, quantify our job you know where it's like people don't always see what's going on behind the scenes and understand that so I think really communicating as much as possible especially with artists that don't have manager and we're the only person on their team it's kind of like you know explaining sometimes you do need to do more hand-holding than you, than you have to do with an artist that you know has a label even if it's a smaller one or has like anyone else working with. there's a radio team there's you know someone else at least you know there's someone else to kind of fill that gap a little bit versus like just having us you know that's definitely I think helpful yeah I think it's appropriate timing when when that happens I mean just to work your work your scene play shows for some years like yeah we, we, I mean I don't know like I keep mentioning we get people who have played like two shows and you know have a record and you know, want everything. And you're like, no, nah, let's just kind of ease into it a little bit. Like, let's take some time. Um, also just depends on what, who's in it, how, what, you know, what they're in for, you know, what they're, what they're expecting. Um, it's a little hard to talk those down, but oftentimes people, you know, listen to us. I mean, we do this every day, so um, it's not always the answer they want to hear, but you have to be honest. I think that that's just the, uh, that's just kind of how we've always been really. I mean, I was going to say too, that's kind of like, a lot of it can really depend on what people's goals are yeah where it's like you know it's like okay cool I live in LA I want buzz bands I want LA weekly I want you know the LA times or grimy goods or whatever you know and it's like cool you know I'm I'm happy to help you with that you know and it's like okay we're just starting out and you know I work a day job and I have you know a million things to do and I personally can't do this all the time you know so it's like mm -hmm as long as your goals are realistic and you stick to that, you know, because usually they, sometimes they start out that way and it's like, cool, I got that. And now I want, you know, want the world. Um, so, you know, I think it's like making sure everyone is kind of on the same page and, you know, as you grow that you're still kind of maintaining that relationship of communicating and, and not necessarily kind of taking away too much where it's like, you know, some bands see a little bit of success and then all of a sudden it's like, well, why didn't I get get this why didn't I get this and it's like we got you this one amazing thing you know you're a brand new band you know and it's like that that can be a little bit tricky when it's kind of that like 
what's next kind of question. You know, obviously we're doing everything we can, but it's like once people kind of taste the success a little bit, like, you know, some of these smaller bands, it is a little bit hard to kind of manage their expectations. And that is a big part of our job too. Totally. I think also uh, getting people to understand what our job is, is also really just kind of a big thing we spend our time doing. Um, it's not like, on, you know, for lack of trying or for lack of sending emails or whatever relationships, people think, Hey, you didn't get, we weren't able to get this or that. Uh, are your relationships strong enough there? It's like, I mean, yeah, we could speculate all day until you're blue in the face as to why a certain outlet didn't pick up your song or your video, or if they didn't cover you on this new record, even though they did on previous records. Um, that's something we deal with all the time. And it's just saying, hey, I mean, the thing to sort of deal with to say, hey, we can, we have time here on a campaign doesn't mean it's just because they didn't pick up on the album announcement doesn't mean they won't come in for something later or we can figure out something that's more appropriate for you now because you put out a record two, three years ago and, and in our lifetime and world is just, that's forever ago. You know, it's essentially like a new, it's like essentially like starting over. I've told bands in the past, where I'm like, you put out a record three years ago, we're starting over, you know, it's maybe some of those supporters are still at the outlets that they were at when they covered you, but no longer is that the case where you have to find them. And if they're in positions at their new outlet to where they can cover a band like yours then cool, but some have, you know, just stopped working altogether or in positions that don't allow them to cover a band this size. Maybe they've progressed to a different level or whatever the case may be. But I think a lot of that is when you get a band on board with knowing how particularly tough this job is, then they begin to understand like, hey, you know, it's not that we're not sending those emails or being as aggressive as we can be without being too obnoxious, but saying, hey, this is someone's, if this doesn't click with somebody, it, it's fine. Nobody has to like your record. I mean, that's, that's, that's a big thing I tell people. It's like, listen, I'll do what I can, but this is all, this all comes down to taste and relationships. And sure, a good record can take you far, but a lot of these things also have to kind of come into play for, you know, to be you to really be successful with a lot of these outlets and where they continue to cover you over so many years. If, if this artist or those bands are really kind of in for that long haul, which a lot of them aren't, you know, a lot of them want that quick pop and then that's kind of it. And if it doesn't happen, it's like, well, we're an album band. Like I, I like those. I mean, Caroline and I work with bands over several albums and it's like cool to say, hey, these are the people that didn't come in on the last one. We're going to try them on this one. Maybe they'll, maybe new staffers are at this new outlet. Maybe we can try them or this feature is a new thing that I feel like it would be good for. It's, it's, it makes sense for that. And that's why I kind of pride ourselves on working with people over several, several years and albums because we know where everyone is. If they went to somebody else, they would just have to start over as well. But you know, it has happened, you know, and it does, it, it, it's a totally fine thing. I mean, getting territorial over someone making calls on their career is something I'm not, I don't do, uh, but you know, it is tough out there, but again, it just, it's nice when you bring bands on your side and be like, Hey, listen, this is not a very easy thing to do. I don't just send out emails that things happen. You have to know that there's a process here and just have a little faith in it. The, the lines are blurred in everything Caroline and I do. Um, it's almost at the point where it's like, hey, I don't really have a, that's not really my thing. It's like when people ask you, we have bands all the time asking us about playlisting, uh, all sorts of stuff, you know, sponsorship stuff, all kinds of things that, you know, are not in our wheelhouse, but we have relationships with these people where I'm fine to connect the dots. And if they're pals, I'm cool to do it. But I think it really just depends on the publicist you decide to hire and how deep they want to get into that. But I think PR, marketing, it's all really kind of blurred at this point. Everyone's kind of dipping into different, you know, territories where I'll be pitching playlisting or if there's radio stuff that I generally pitch that's kind of a bit more bigger scale, uh, I'll do that. But it also depends on who it is on the receiving end that's like doing that job. You know, if there's a radio person that doesn't like you dipping into that world, then you have conversations and people get angry. But I even get to the point where I'm like telling my bands to, and we even talked about this with Revelries, like, they need to reach, you know, bands should reach out to writers or at least follow them, not reach out to them. But I mean, if they wanted to, you know, send, send, hey, here's our EP, here's our single, here's this, like, check it out and just be very breezy about it. I think having relationships on Twitter and all that kind of stuff is really totally like beneficial for everyone. So when I say that, I mean, I think I'm kind of going back to the point where, yeah, we traditionally stick to our, you know, stay in our lane with, with PR, but 
we've been doing this for so long that we know so many people outside of PR. And if there's any kind of uh, opportunities for bands to, you know, to, you know, go to Fender or to do things like that, then we're happy to help that out. It's not necessarily our job to be that person, but oftentimes we get people asking us for everything, like I mentioned earlier. So for us and this type of boutique company, it really is like, okay, I'll put my foot down on certain things when it's like, hey, I, I will tell you, I don't do Spotify playlisting, but there are certain things that I will approach and, you know, go for, blah, blah, blah. But so we'll straight up just say, listen, that's not something I do. I'm not experienced in it. And also even just within press, you know, we have a lot of bands that ask us for UK press and we don't do UK press. Um, I try to do UK press, but our relationships are just not that strong. And you have bands who don't have a label paying you out of pocket. I'm like, listen, I can kick five to 10 pitches out to the important, you know, music outlets in the UK. It's not going to kill me, but it's also, I lead off with saying, Hey, those are not my contacts. They're not my relationships. I don't particularly have great relationships there, but if they like something, they like something. Uh, just like with anybody starting out. I mean, you don't get your emails answered at all. Um, I think Caroline and I have been doing this long enough to where we're at a place where people, if they don't like, even if they don't like what we're pitching them, they respect us enough to respond. Um, UK is a little different because we don't work with those people. So I always bring that up too. So yeah, it's very fluid is what I'm saying. It just, you never know what people are going to ask you for. And if, if it's something that's just kind of out of what you're willing to do, then, then cool. But I will, I'll, I'll fake it as long as I can, but you know, that's, that's how that goes with me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, pretty much in the same boat. Um, you know, I feel like, um, you know, we'll pitch some branding stuff. You know, if we have the relationships, we, we pitch it. And, you know, oftentimes if bands ask for too much, like, I'll be like, hey, you know, here are some of my favorite managers. Or here's, you know, like, I get asked a lot about, like, distro. And it's like, who do you, who's the best person? Or who, who you know, and it's like, you know, here's these three companies that are, fans work with and they like them you know it's like i had the contact and here it is if you want to reach out directly or it's like i'll introduce people um you know the same with some brands where it's like you know this is my friend you know that i can hook you up with that vendor or whatever and you, you take it from here or you know if it's somebody um that i just kind of want to you know continue that relationship with i'll kind of take the lead on it a little bit um but sometimes it's like, okay, you know, we're looking for a manager and it's like, you know, or I tell people like, you know, you've asked a lot of questions that are kind of out of my name a little bit. Like, you know, have you considered a manager? Like here's some that I like, or here's some, you know, that other artists we work with have had success with. Like, you know, it's like, it's on them a little bit, um, you know, or just kind of guiding people a little bit, um, which I'm happy to do that because, you know, it takes some things off my plate and also kind of is helping them kind of, move things to the next level too so yeah I mean I guess like starting from the first question uh just I mean I feel going to shows and being enthusiastic when you're young is kind of how we all sort of started doing this Chris more so than any of us uh I wish you knew Chris you'd understand but yeah going to shows nightly was his thing um talking to people, being energetic about, you know, bands that, I mean, there's nothing writing on it. If there's a band that you like and you talk to them after the show and, you know, feel like you want to establish a relationship and say, Hey, I work at this company. You know, we also work with these other bands. Uh, it's legitimate. And you spend the time pitching that and just seeing where it goes. I think it's kind of a, you know, going to shows and doing the social thing was definitely the way that I started. Um, be nice when you, you know, could go to a show and meet an editor there, but a lot, I mean, all, a lot of times, um, for us, Caroline and I and Chris, I mean, our last company did Bonnaroo, they did Outside Lands, they did, you know, press for all those big uh, music festivals. So that was always a really cool opportunity for us specifically to, uh, you know, really kind of get intimate with a lot of these people who, you know, yeah, we were the press people, we were in the trailer, we had all the Wi-Fi, we had all the, we had like, you know, beverages there. It was cool to meet people in those situations that you wouldn't otherwise like do because, you know, you're just an email and a name to these people. But if they see that you're like, you know, a likable person and you want to hang out and, you know, just all those things, you can up, you know, having like really good relationships with that. And that carries over, uh, doesn't happen always, but you know, it is, it is what it is. 
but those are always really fun going to governor's ball every year it's saying hi to people you haven't seen in years uh it's just a night it's just another component to you as a person that you bring to your company and to your bands too i mean like you're representing them uh, if you have good relationships with people and people like you for your taste and your personality then you know thing, good things can happen you know like that's how it is i mean you don't want to work with someone who's a jerk and doesn't you know doesn't treat people well because yeah that's obviously the person you're choosing to represent you it reflects badly on you but yeah so that's how i kind of did it probably from the outset i wasn't as like the go-getter as a lot of people used to be um but also that was over 10 years ago so things have definitely changed but yeah what about you caroline um yeah i mean i was gonna say like you know when i first started i remember like being in new york at cake shop and i remember there was a big band playing and they're playing this intimate show and i remember seeing like six publicists in the room and we were we all knew we were all like going after this band and we were all like who's the first person that's gonna say hi to the you know it's like we like i so remember that show you know in the basement of cake shop just being like you're looking around the room and you're like this person this person, this person you know just you know like you definitely like having that energy you know i was 24 25 years old you know so it's a different thing and but um you know i mean like definitely in terms of like getting bands it's like seeing things and you know getting excited about them i think that you know one thing that both of tito and i and chris is like we are passionate about the artists that we have and i think that that shows you know it, it i think that people can see through like people being excited about an artist versus like a cut and paste email like here's this listen to it you know it's like showing that there is a reason you know it's like we're excited and, and pitching people appropriately where it's like hey, like, this is right for, you know, a Relics American songwriter versus like, okay, this is not right for, you know, Spin or whoever, you know, so it's just like knowing your audience. And I think that that's something where it's like, okay, cool. Like Spin is doing this new series on their Twitch channel. And it's like, hey, this is a, you know, like complimenting people on like things that you think are cool, where it's like, hey, this is a cool series. We think this artist would be perfect for this. And here's these three reasons why, you know, so it's like making sure you're, not just randomly like pitching you know blanket things out to everyone versus like actually like seeing something on the site or it's you know like you read a cool article by someone it's like hey i read this article and i saw that you like this band and this band is pretty similar so i think you should check it out you know so it's like doing your research that way is also kind of important versus just like here's an artist you know go to town you know so i think like being strategic about it and you know there are a lot of new little features on websites where it's like okay cool like you might not get an interview on spin but we can get you a video of the day and it's still going to get the looks and you know people are excited it's a name that they know and recognize and like how can we get like our smaller artists even if it's a, a small placement how do we get them these like coverage on bigger outlets um so it's like finding these kind of hidden features or you know things you know, and I think it is a matter of like, you know, also engaging with people on social media where it's like, we had to do that too. Not, it's not only on an artist where it's like, you know, we follow people on Instagram, we follow people on Twitter and it's, you know, interacting with them that way. It's like, we're, we're people too, you know, it's not just our job. It's like, we mainly like everyone we do, you know, so it's like, you know, showing some love as like human beings as well as like, okay, I just need you for something, you know, and that's part of that relationship where it's, it's like, I like you as a person and not just for what you can do, because that is pretty transparent. You know, I think also like for artists to, you know, sometimes I come to people come to us and they're like, I want to be on this blog. And it's like, this blog is like a country music blog and you're a rock band. You know what I mean? It's like, making sure that your goals are like appropriate with what you're the music that you're creating or you're just like I want my album to re be reviewed by this website and they only review singles you know what I mean so it's like they need to do their research too in terms of like making sure it's the right fit you know sometimes you're like this doesn't make any sense you know so it's like you know they need to come with to you with like goals that, that you know make sense for where they are in, in their career you know I, I always ask people um you know where do you go to find music outside of your friends? You know, that's mm -hmm. something that I definitely ask a lot of artists and some people are like, I don't know, or pitchfork. And you're like, where else? You know, so it's like, 
let's make like a plan that makes sense for everyone. You know, I definitely feel like that's like a good question. Like where do you find music outside of your friends? You know, it's like, or, you know, what music websites do you read? Because sometimes people come to us and they're like, I don't know. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Well, it's also like, you know, people come with that, you know, they, they will come with their three outlets and it's like, okay, that's probably not going to happen. But we have to also in a, in a way convince them that the other ones a lot of the grassroots sites, a lot of the smaller kind of starting up sites that have good socials or whatever the case may be, that those are, you know, valuable to them. You know, if they have no, no profile, no, like nothing really going for them yet. Uh, why not do like an, a Q&A with one of these like outlets? Why not do like a session with them? And it's, it's sometimes it's hard to convince them of that, but oftentimes a lot of the newer bands are stoked to have anything. They're stoked to just see their name on a website with like, you know, favorable, you know, favorable words and, and some nice nods there. But a lot of, yeah, Caroline and I do that all the time where I'm like, Hey, Rolling Stone and NPR are not coming in on this, but dude, this one's good. Uh, it's appropriate for you and we should do it. And it's just oftentimes you get people fighting you, but you're just like, listen, this is where we're at. You know, there's a not, there's not a lot of real estate out there. Uh, and you just kind of have to roll with it sometimes. And also like, even just with premier culture, which is kind of going away, um, slowly, but, you know, convincing people that there can be a campaign. I, I'm working with someone right now. We did everything outside of getting a single premiere and, you know, great, you know, great playlisting, good posts on certain sites. And it's like, this is proof that there is life outside of that. And that is also a hard thing to tell people where you're like, Hey, because some think that if you don't get a premiere, if you don't get certain things, then the campaign is a bust. And it's like, you know, I, I don't like being that person saying, hey, don't be so, you know, down about this. I mean, things do take shape and they take time. But that is sadly something Caroline and I have to do. It's, it's This can be a very emotional job for, for her and I and also the artists involved. You know, you just, you don't like bringing bad news to them. But unfortunately, like our job is a ton of bad news. You know, you do have a lot of those really amazing victories and it feels great. But right. our day, our day is filled with silence and passes for the majority of it. And that's fine. I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be tough to deal with it. And some people don't last, but you know, I think we kind of came up at a time where that was still a uh, kind of thing, you know, this working relationships was a thing. I'm not saying it's not a thing now, but you know, people came up, have come up over the past decade that, you know, didn't come from the time that Caroline and I were, you know, starting out our career and having those personal relationships. Everyone's living on Twitter and on their websites. That's kind of how that's going. But uh, yeah, I'll stop babbling now. Uh, no. But yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how I see, you know, bands doing that. But also for bands reaching out to us, I like a, I like a nice pitch that has a cool story, uh, private links to music and nothing too over, over bloated or whatever. Uh, just something that says, hey, we played these shows, we played with these people, we've maybe gone on these tours, just information about what you're doing, what you're trying to do. Um, and yeah, like just kind of links to your socials and that kind of thing, just making it easy for us versus, you know, I've gotten I've gotten novels from bands. I'm like, that's cool and all, but like we're, you know, I'd like to listen to the music and if it's not a fit for us, then we'll politely let them know that. And we'll suggest other people that might be, you know, we get that all the time. I get a lot of people saying, oh, this person at this company suggested you because you kind of work more in the rock space or whatever. I don't know. Um, and, and people have done their research too. They, they directly reference things that I've done with certain bands and have, you know, I've said that they've paid attention to some of that stuff. And that's really cool. I mean, I like that. I don't think it's, it makes me feel weird because I'm not that person. I'm so behind the scenes on a lot of this stuff, but it's nice to know that people get you and they know that like, oh, you know, you're working like five of my favorite bands right now. Like that's, this is, this is, this is cool. I'd like to talk to you, but yeah, everyone's different and everyone, you know, pitches differently. But I think that that's kind of the core of what, at least, uh, at least what I live for. Yeah. It's, I mean, the same for me. I mean, I think it's, you know, definitely like to just, then when people kind of like give you a little props or like, oh, we saw you work at this band or, you know, or if artists, they're like, you know, we're friends with this band and they said you did a great job. Like that's kind of always a nice thing, you know, um, it's a little, you know, it's like things like that can be kind of tricky because it's like, you know, they see that their friends had success and then we, you know, might not have the same success with them. So it can be a little bit tricky, um, but it's always nice when, you know, people say nice things with, about our work and, you know, Tito and I both have had, you know, some long-term clients, like 10 years plus, and that's always fun, you know, because it's, um, you know, it kind of becomes like family in a way, um, 
you know, and like he said, it's like emotional, you know, especially with artists like that, where it's like, you do have these long standing careers and you really want them to do well. And, you know, it, if people have moved on or, you know, people are gone or people just aren't fighting it, you know, it, that it's hard, you know, because it's like, he, that, that artist on their fourth album with you who you can't get TV for, and you're just like, yeah, I, got, like TV every I'm doing it, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that that's it's always a kind of a double edged sword where it's like, you know, it's great to kind of keep it in the family, but also it, you know, there's a little bit of pressure that either you know you put on yourself or you know is automatically just kind of built into that campaign. Um, yeah, but mm-hmm. I, I think. I think, like he said, it can be emotional because there are days when it's like I sent out a hundred pitches and I got two responses and it's like, what did I just do for the last six hours, you know? And it's, um, yeah, so that can be a little bit hard and it can be draining and it can be, you know, not, not to have a defeatist attitude, but it's like, man, I just like emailed everyone, you know, but then like two days later you have like, oh my God, I got all these like amazing things, you know, it's like, there's definitely a lot of like ups and downs to this job for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can definitely see that. And like, you know, on, on the other side of that, like I can only imagine, you know, how it must feel to be sending everything out, not get anything back. And then having to tell people that is just like, I mean, I, we've been on the receiving end of that and it's devastating and it's really hard because like, how, how are you supposed to like spin that? You know, it's, you know, it's, yeah. but you know um, it's 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 a thing that everybody is going through so yeah. i think that people can take comfort in that i get i talk with publicists and younger people all the time about this where they're just like i got i'm not getting anybody to respond to me i can't get any coverage i'm like that is across the board even publicists older than caroline and i that have been doing this for you know 15 years longer than we have don't get all their emails you know answered it's just it's just a thing it's happening with everybody so i think that you know, people can't take comfort in the fact that this is just across the board and it's not you and it's not your, you know, you ha- you can't help but feel bad about what you're doing. You you feel like, am I, are my pitches wrong? Am I not doing this right? Am I sending these at the, I mean, it could be anything. Am I sending this at the wrong time? What's the best time to catch people? It's it's so silly, but you know what? Like with you, we hear this from everybody. So it's it's nice to, to hear that every once in a while because it's just it's just the way it is. You know, like I said, just having everything prepared, uh, being ready to work. A lot of bands don't want to do that. Uh, Saying, hey, anything that comes in, I'm going to send you and I'm going to try to keep as busy as I can. But oftentimes you get bands that that aren't really willing to do that. Even just like, hey, I need a quote for the song or, hey, I need you to like send me some information about this video. It's like, you know, we're trying to trying to get things done here. But I think that's always not always a problem, but it can be a problem Um, when it's like, hey, we're here at the bottom trying to get anything let's all just put our heads down and work um that oftentimes becomes a thing and also just the preparedness i think that that's important just having like your bio your photos your simple things that people are going to ask for um if i'm veering on the right end of the question but yeah it's more like that it's it's like you know oftentimes you get people that are not they don't have any of this stuff in place like listen this is part of it you need to you need to have somebody write this um I've had to step in and write bios for bands too, and I didn't get paid for it. Um, it's 500 bucks that could have gone into a writer's pocket. You know, that's just how it works. But, you know, being prepared, being available, being willing to work. Um, and yeah, just being someone that's just, you know, like we always talk about this. I mean, during, being vocal on social media, being interesting, uh, not just like posting a photo and leaving it there or whatever. I mean, I think just being more, uh, just colorful with your with your profile and your personality that's going to make people want to cover you and also like we've, we've talked about this on calls before where you know an editor or writer might not like your music but they'll cover you if they like you as a person it's happened so many times in the past where a lot of bands have gotten television or gotten certain things just because of their relationship with some of the bookers or publicist relationship with like bookers it's just it's just a thing it's a part of your it's a part of like your band's existence is to be likable and to be available for people um, when you get to a level that allows you to be a jerk, then be a jerk, but whatever. It's, it doesn't benefit anybody at this point when you're, you know, looking for people to kind of essentially do favors for you and, and, and write about your band and be excited about you. I think it's just, you know, entering with that attitude is, is always the best thing. And, 
and yeah, I mean, we're always kind of approaching this the same way as well on our end, so. Yeah, I mean, the same thing, like, you know, uh, I, you know, a lot of the sites, they ask for email interviews, and it's like, I'll get things back where it's like three word replies, and I'm just like, that's all you're going to say, you know, it's like you're complaining that you're not getting press, and it's like, tell me about your record, and it's like, it's about my cat, and it's like, cool. Um, so, you know, like, I always am like, please reply with at least three sentences, you know, but it's like, I have to do that because otherwise I will get these things, you know, where it's like, it's like one word answers and it's like, this is not helping you, you know what I mean? And it's always like, I'm always saying artists, I'm like, you're your own best advocate, you know, it's like, sure, you're paying us to do it, but it's like, if you're not putting the effort and the time into it, like, why should these people care? You know, it's like, you're wasting your money, you're wasting our time, you know, it's like, that's definitely something where it's like, okay, like, write, you know, write four sentences about this video, you know, it's like, I have to be, like, for us, like, I know that there's certain artists that I need to be specific, and, like, some people will write, you know, novels, and some people, I know that they will come back with, like, these little tiny replies that just won't do them any favors, so it's like, I know I need to be very specific in what I'm looking for, I know that I have to really spell it out, where others, it's like, I'll get, you know, more than enough, um, so I think, yeah, that's definitely something where it's like, I think that artists, you know, I think that sometimes they're a little bit shy about promoting themselves. At least that's some of the artists that I come, you know, that I work with where they're like, I don't know, this feels weird to tweet about it. And it's like, yeah, but if you don't, who's going to do it? You know, and that like, I kind of need to remind people that like, you need to share, you need to like sell it, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors by staying silent. So you know, it, it feels a little weird at first, but the more you do it, the easier it's going to become, um, you know, and make sure that, you know, you do follow the journalists that, you know, write about your things on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, social media, whatever, um, you know, just kind of being active and being proactive about your career, you know, because I'm sure you're working with us now, but who knows where you will be down the line, you know, it's like, I don't know, and also, like, if there's labels that you're interested in, you know, send things to them, you know, it's like, just take that initiative to kind of help move your career along. I don't know, little things. I mean, for me, it's a lot of little things. Uh, first, I mean, when I had my name on a replacements press release, that was weird. I was like, this is insane. Why would I ever be like this? It was me and Ken. We did the replacements for like a year and it was incredible. Uh, not the working of it was incredible because, you know, personalities and all that, but, uh, it was just really, that was a weird, like, okay, that's a bizarre moment. I think like that, I have a lot of those, um, gosh, I don't even know. Well, I mean, also just like things like doing late night and like, you know, doing late night TV and, you know, I did the daily show and like, and doing things like that never gets old. Um, I don't care how old you are or what you're doing. Um, those moments are awesome because they rarely happen. And the moments that I was doing stuff with against me, a band I work with, um, a lot of really interesting moments. I think like for me personally in that world was when we did Letterman the first time Laura was uh, presenting as female. And that was a very crazy moment because, uh, just seeing the chatter on Twitter really kind of got me too. even also uh, the night of the Rolling Stone feature going live. Um, I got emails the next day from parents and coaches and they just found my email and told me their story about, oh, this like my son is, you know, transgender and this is they were crying last night because they saw this or, you know, it gave visibility to you know, to her and also just, uh, you know, you know, trans people who, you know, being seen on David Letterman is just kind of a massive deal for that. And it was a, a very cool uh, moment for me specifically just to read that, even though I'm so behind the scenes of all that. Um, it was nice to know that, you know, it touched people. Um, and it continues to, even on The Daily Show, like that was awesome. And But also just as a personal PR thing, I mean, doing those are, they're, they never happen, unless you're like, you know, working with much bigger artists and, and that kind of deal. But for me and our kind of humble little company, it was, it was awesome. It's like, those are, those are cool moments versus like the daily thing. I mean, we all have desk jobs essentially, you know? And so, you know, when you do go to shows and you meet people and you get to do fun, you know, things that you're going to remember, um, 
that to me is what sticks more than just one sort of big moment. But yeah, those are kind of a couple for me. Sorry. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Um, I mean, I just have like a couple of funny ones. I mean, like the first time, like I went to South by Southwest and I was super, I was super young, super South by Southwest. And I remember like someone on the street was like, John Perales really wants to meet you. And I was like, what? It's like me. It's like, oh my God. Like, I was like, this guy, like, okay. Like, I just remember just being like, kind of freaked out to like meet him. And he like saw my badge and was like, yeah, I wanted to meet you. And I was like, uh, what? Um, that was kind of a weird one. Um, uh, I remember one of the first ever like NPR music things they did like a behind the scenes like they made this band that I worked with Georgie James um, they made them like write a song in 24 hours they like trapped them in like the NPR office building then it ended up being like nominated for an Emmy like that was kind of cool um, when I did late night in a row like I had like three in a row and every time I went there was Kardashian I was just like nobody's <laughs> wanted her and they're like the day before, like, it was, like, Obama, like, for one of more, like, we're gonna get someone good, we're gonna get someone good, and, like, it was, like, three in a row, it was always a Kardashian, um, and then in my first job in New York at CMJ, um, we always did, like, a day party, like, at AM, we always did a day party, and, um, we did, our party was wild, um, we had Arcade Fire play Arlene's Grocery in 2004, like, it was when Funeral came out, and I remember, like, <laughs> the line around the block was, like, so long, and we were just, like, turning everyone away. Like, everyone was trying to get into our party, um, because it's, like, part of the grocery that holds, like, well, her people. Um, and I remember it was, like, Saturday Looks Good to Me, The Prosaics, um, Arcade Fire, Q and I, U, one other band, this I can't remember. Like, Q and I, U was named for Arcade Fire, or Arlene's Grocery. That was, like, that was pretty special. And we had, like, so we put on that show, and it was just, like, everybody was trying to meet us that week. Everyone was, like, wait, because well, it was, like, a laminate to get into the party. And, like, everyone was, like, do you have any extra lines you want to come to Like, I remember this, like, guy that, like, produced one of Madonna's records was, like, Jerry's, like, do you know who I am? And everyone was, like, I don't know. That, what, about, what about you? 